Sometimes we need to add the certificates role in order to set up a public key infrastructure. And there's lots of different options. So let's take a look at what that is in our Windows Server 2016. Let's go ahead and click on Add Roles and Features from the Server Manager. And we'll click Next. And we'll just click, keep uh, clicking Next until we get to the Active Directory Certificate Services. Let's go ahead and check that box. And we'll click the Add Features that go along with it. Go ahead and click Next. Next. One of the questions is always, do we do this on a domain controller or not? And Microsoft recommends you don't do it on a domain controller because it might be giving too much access to one server, both on the certificate side as well as the domain controller side. However, in our case, we just have a couple of servers and they're both domain controllers. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on a domain controller, but you can choose that yourself. All right, so the first certification uh, server that we set up, Certificate Authority, has got to be the Certification Authority at the top level. We can also check web services, web enrollment, device enrollment, online responder, all those things if we want to, but we have to at least put in the Certification Authority as that is the top level. So let's go ahead and install. And our installation is complete. Let's go ahead and click Close. And we'll click on the triangle and click on Configure Active Directory Certificate Services. Let's go ahead and make sure the administrator is in there and click Next. And we're going to choose the Certification Authority. And we'll go ahead and click Next. And we want to choose an Enterprise CA, and that's because we're using this in Active Directory, and it's our first Certification Authority. So go ahead and click Next. And again, this, since this is the first one, we're going to choose a root CA. On your second server, you can choose a subordinate CA if you want, but it'll look to the root CA for any types of new certificates or any certificates that might have been revoked. We're going to choose to create a new private key. And now we want to choose the type of key that we're going to be adding. If you need a specific type of key, then make sure you find out from your vendor what that is. But we'll just go ahead and choose the default SHA-256 and the Microsoft Software Key. We'll leave our default names here, and that's because this is a domain controller. And we're going to go ahead and leave the domain controller naming information in here. And you see that information both in the common name at the top as well as the distinguished name at the bottom. So if you're ever asked for a distinguished name, you need the CN equals and then the DC equals information. So uh, the first one is the name of the computer, and the second part is the name of the domain. Go ahead and click Next. Now we need to put in how many years it's going to be valid, and five years is the default. We'll go ahead and leave that, but you can change it if you like. And this is the location, which is the default, for the database and the logs. So if you need to change that, you can do that at this time. And we'll click Configure. And we were successful. We'll go ahead and click Close. So if we go to Tools, and then we go to Certification Authority, we can see there is our server at this point. So there's our revoked certificates, which we have none of, issued certificates, pending, etc. There are lots of videos and other information on what to do at this point, such as creating an EFS certificate, using certificate templates, exporting certificates, etc. But we're just focusing on the installation portion of uh, the certification authority and take a look for other videos in our playlist that will talk about the other certificates that you can use and create in Windows Server 2016.